What up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Nish and J-Dog back at it with episode five. How y'all been doing? We've been doing good. What's up, man? If, if you guys can't tell, Nish is a little annoyed. That was the third time that we've started the podcast, and you guys are only hearing it just now because Nish forgot to hit record on his on his audio. I'm just I'm telling everyone your business. Jerome forgot to remind me, and he's the master. He's the manager. He's the expert in this thing. Would you call me so. the producer? that word if i knew it yeah what what is you think our breakup of like if if this were to turn into like a company what's the percentage breakup we would we would make this split okay 50 50 first of all don't act like you, <laughs> you do all this all right you would be producer and editor okay and i would be content creator <laughs> <laughs> i would be lead entertainer lead entertainer okay yeah, that so would be my title you're, so like you're you make it Pitt. happen but I make it entertaining. Um, <laughs> okay. So yeah. did you just say that I'm not entertaining? I mean, if the shoe fits. Damn. That's rude, man. Speaking of shoes, I see you got your wall back up. I do. This is, oh, this side, wrong side. This, so this apartment's a little strange. So they've got like closets, but with a sliding door. And it's That's got normal. like, it's got mirrors on, on the door though. That's pretty know. normal, bro. Is it? Yeah. I've never lived in a place like that. Yeah, bougie, but, freaking bougie. That's so cheap. It, so it like also you've always lived in a bougie place. Okay, it also um, it's like a loft situation. I don't know if you can see like at the top of the screen, but yeah. you can see the ceiling because like right here where my finger is. Um, sorry if you're listening to the audio only version, but right here where my finger is, there's no there's no like wall connecting it to the ceiling. So like for instance, like Barb's out in the kitchen right now. I can hear everything that she's doing, and she can hear everything I'm doing because there's oh, no ceiling. I got you. Like yeah. it's it's a little strange. I I also assume that like electricity is more expensive because like it's just all one big open area, you know. Why would that make it more expensive? Like uh, heating and cooling. Yeah, like heating and cooling, like the AC. Well, you're still like you're still cooling the whole apartment, just like you That's would in true. a normal situation. I guess. The ceilings are uh, like elevated, so the yeah. the volume of the room is probably larger than a regular yeah. apartment. What's what's like the ceiling height of a regular apartment? Ten feet? I don't know. Probably. Probably. Yeah. This is probably like mm, thirteen, fourteen. It's not bad. I'm sure it'll be fine. This is a riveting conversation that we're having right now. No, the reason I talked about the shoes because like everyone at works is like, man, your boy got like a wall full of shoes, and I'm like, yeah, he really likes sneakers, and I'm like, hey. he's probably got like three grand in that wall. To, probably, honestly, honestly, I don't want to admit this on the air, but probably more than that. No, that's just, that's just that's just bad. Yeah, shameful. It's, I've got literally. And here one, you are complaining about the dang heating and cooling costs. Literally, this one sneaker right here is almost by itself a third of what you guessed. No way. Yeah. I think Why? that That's a thousand dollars? Well, I didn't want to say it. I wanted to make it like, you know, a little Well you said a third of a thousand. The people I know. are stupid, Jerome. Well, you know, I wanted to make them do some math in their Wait, head so some pull, people pull, pull the shoe back up. Seven fifty. Seven fifty is what I paid. Why the hell is that shoe seven it's not even anything special. It literally looks like oh, it has special words on the other side. It's a Nike Nike Vapor Max off white. It's got this zip tie on it. It's supposed to be there for style. No. I've worn it. I've worn these maybe twice. So you can't even sell them for seven fifty anymore. Right? No, I definitely can't sell them for seven fifty because but you paid they're used. For them? Correct. Correct. Why? They look cool, man. They're special limited edition. You know what else will look cool? Seven Benjamins on your feet. <laughs> that will look cool. Listen, what am I supposed to do? Get duct tape and like put dollar bills like all around my foot no do you ever have those kids at your high school who like made wallets and stuff out of duct tape um probably but i never saw them were you one of those kids no i didn't have a wallet because i didn't have money in high school <laughs> that's funny all i right. know you were stealing money from your parents 
Oh, I was. They knew about it though, so it wasn't stealing. <laughs> my so my mom knew. My dad didn't. And then we had something happen when I was growing up to where we had like a robbery or whatever. And I told my dad, I told my parents, I was like, yeah, they took, they like found it and took it all. It wasn't a lot of money, but still, my dad was like, where'd you get it in the first place? He thought I was like stealing from people or something. Oh. Yeah. He was like, assume the worst dad. And my mom was like, no, no, he's been, I've been like giving 20 bucks or whatever out the register every single time, like every week or like every day or something like that. So really like you weren't stealing money. Your mom was just giving you money out of the register. <laughs> Yes, because I wanted to feel like I was making something. Oh well, that's fair. Like you worked at the at the store all the time, but they didn't pay you for that. Correct. So yeah, think of that as like your repayment. Yeah, and that didn't even get it because some assholes fucking stole it. <laughs> so let me just recap the way that you explained this story. The way that you explained this story was you stole money from your parents, and, and then, then someone, someone stole, stole it from me. <laughs> So oh technically, they stole money from my parents. Yeah, no, they some your your parents got they got robbed. gypped. And they, they got, got robbed. robbed. They got double robbed. Happened. Dude, so we've been uh like I finally started my MBA program right, mm -hmm. and we've been talking about just like a bunch of different stuff. And one of the things I wanted to ask you about that I was learning about today was the CEO, the ex CEO of Nissan, Carlos Carlos, what's his name? <laughs> Gomes. Gones, Carlos Gones. Um, I, I don't know how I missed this because this wasn't even that long ago, right? No, it wasn't. Maybe t three years? No, within the year. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah. But so clearly I didn't listen to the story close enough. But um, for those of you that don't know, Carlos Gones, the ex-CEO of Nissan, a.k.a. the company that Niche works for, um, apparently was hiding money. Or not really hiding money. He was kind of like working the books a little bit. He was stealing um, money from the company. Let's just put it like that since we're on the whole theft situation On the, on too. the theft situation. Yeah, that's what, that's what reminded me. But yeah. um, basically, he didn't like the fact that like Japanese automotive CEOs weren't getting paid as much as American automotive CEOs. And so he made a contract up with the CFO of Nissan at the time that allowed him to defer his salary to after retirement so i don't know what his salary was but basically he was getting a ridiculous amount of money after he retired and they didn't put it on the books when they should have so the japanese government apparently found him guilty and they put out a warrant for his arrest and niche take it away tell him what this man did to avoid getting arrested well he was arrested and put in like japanese prison or whatever for a while oh that's right then he went out on bail yeah, apparently he lost like 50 pounds because like they just like starved the man or something. No, Japan. Yeah. Dude, we've both Bro. been to Japan. You think Japanese people would do that? Yes. They, they would not starve very, you? I feel like they take crime very seriously and they like punish people very seriously, especially if it's that mag like something of that magnitude. Because And that's why Japan is so maybe safe because people murderer. don't commit crimes in maybe like any kind of sense. Japan, I feel like is very safe because people like the culture and everything – I just feel like people are very not bad because like That's if true. you do do something bad, <laughs> do do, um, then <laughs> it's a 25 year old man, ladies and gentlemen. And then if you do something bad, then they'll just gonna punish you really bad. And plus like that was like, I don't know. I feel like Japanese people also are very proud in their culture to where like, if you are stealing from Nissan, who is like, I feel like Toyota, Nissan, these places, these yeah. companies are like the heart of, japan itself yeah and they take a lot of pride Very in big these names. companies yeah so when so tell the people how like he that, escaped how he got away on bail I, I heard a story that he literally like packed himself in like a wooden box with some holes in it and then he got shipped to lebanon where they don't have like a um, extra diving treaty or whatever that's exactly no what extradition happened. that's exactly then, what happened and then here's the funny thing lebanon needed like help from like other countries in the world because they were struggling and whatever and japan was like yeah we'll help you but you have to give us gones back <laughs> and and lebanon was seriously like nope we can't do that and they didn't take Jap uh, japan's help oh dude that would have been a great end to that story if they just yeah. shipped him back but like also in just a cardboard box with holes in it <laughs> no but yeah that's crazy like how do you even think of that i heard that or during our little case study or whatever we read that he had someone like plan this entire thing out they put him in like like you said a box specifically took him to an airport that they knew 
didn't have like the ability to scan um packages of that size and and then yeah they put him on a plane and just that's wild that's insane he's an escape artist man it's like uh was that one guy on wall street's name frank abignale or something yeah they uh what's uh how to get it or catch me if you they can. Made, they made a movie about it. Yeah. Wasn't it called Catch Me If You Can? Leonardo DiCaprio? I don't know, but it, it was, yeah, it was Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Yeah. I think it that was, was a great movie. Frank. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, like, that's. In one of the scenes, he's like, the only reason I remember the name because he's like, one of the scenes, he's like, Abagnale, not Abagnale, not Abagnale, Abagnale. And I was like, that's the only reason it stuck to me. You need to take some lessons from these actual criminals because clearly you're not doing a very good job at thievery. I just said I wasn't stealing. <laughs> but okay, if you want me to pick up that on the side, I will. I need to make some extra money anyway. On the topic of you should you could play like RuneScape or something and like get your thievery up to like 99 or something like that. Okay, this is no. Anyway, on the topic of my MBA program, another thing that's really frustrating is the fact that everything's online and like everything's on Zoom, you know? And it's really just like there's so many frustrating things about Zoom. Like I don't know, like the professor's internet will cut out and all of a sudden you just lose everything. Or they'll try to do like a poll using the polling feature in Zoom and it's like, why? Why can't we just raise our hands? But it's like they can't see all 60 students all at once. So even if you raise your hand, like it doesn't work. I don't know. But technology has really been making me annoyed recently. So I came up with a list of just crappy tech products. Was that a good segue? That was a good segue. (laughs) Thanks. I had to stop and point it out. I came up with a list of crappy tech products of the 2000s that I figured we could just talk about. All right. What's number one? The first one I've got on here is the infamous Apple Watch. And not specifically the Apple Watch regularly because everyone loves the Apple Watch. It's like the number one smartwatch. I'm talking specifically about the Apple Watch Edition. Do you know what that is? No. You've never heard of the Apple Watch Edition? Okay. No, it literally sounds like it's just the Apple Watch Edition. No. Like no. The Apple Watch, was... like the Watch so, Edition. That's that's the first thing, right? The name is stupid. The yes. Apple Watch Edition. They should have called it like Apple Watch Limited or Limited Edition. Like, I know you're sense. spelling it with like E-D-I, but like you saying Edition is literally like a plus sign to me. <laughs> it's like Apple Watch Plus. Uh, plus what? Edition um. of what? <laughs> it's literally just the Apple Watch. You're so dumb. Um, no, when the Apple Watch first came out, they had this super ultra high end version called the Apple Watch Edition, made out of gold. Okay, like and the whole thing? well, you know how the Apple Watch has like stainless steel around the outside or aluminum. That's what yeah. the case is made out of. So instead of that, they used eighteen karat gold. Okay, and guess how much this thing cost? A regular wow. Apple Watch costs about anywhere from three fifty to seven hundred dollars, say. Seven hundred dollars? Yeah. I, the, I, the I, I, for this one, the, this one with a great name, five dollars. No, be serious. How much you think this costs? Apple Watch well, Edition. I don't know, like fifteen hundred. That's a reasonable guess, because like you know, I think they were trying to get like Rolex territory here. It's worth. Ten thousand dollars. No, it's not worth that. That's how much they were asking. You're right. It was priced at ten thousand dollars. You know how much is worse? Worth how much? Five dollars. I think the only person that I, I mean, I didn't know them, but the only person I heard of buying this watch was like Beyonce, and I don't even think she bought it. I think they just sent her one. But Honestly, I don't like. It's like a status item where you can just be bougie, like with like the millionaires and billionaires of the world. Like if they wanted to have one, they'd be like, "Yeah, I got ten grand on my wrist, and it's yeah, just an but... Apple Watch." And like I doubt like you could even see the gold that much. Like you can't, you can't. Yeah. It's just around the wrist. But like, okay, let's talk about Rolexes or something. Would you buy a Rolex? No, I wouldn't either. Like maybe we're just the type of people. Maybe it's the Indian in us where we're frugal. And we don't care about stuff like that. But like. I mean, that's not I true. Would, like, I'm just not into watches like that. Like, I would yeah, okay, I'd probably pay, either. like, 50 bucks for a watch. But, like, something that I like, I'd probably pay a lot more money than some other people would. Okay, would you buy... What's something you really like? Like, cars? Sure. What's your dream car? Like, dream actual attainable car? I'd like to get, like, an R34. 
I have no idea what that is. You're gonna have it's to like an old, it's go like an old, more in detail. It's like an old Nissan Skyline. You can pick them up. They're oh. about to. You can't get them in because like emissions and stuff like that. But they're about to be like. Aren't antiques. they not street legal? Well, they're about to consider be considered antiques. So like antiques, you can get like and get away. Is with. that the is that the one that Brian O'Connor drives in yeah. Fast and Furious too? Yeah. The Skyline. Yeah. Okay. But it's like okay. a pretty cheap car. I just like I just like it. How how expensive? Up. You can probably pick it up for like twenty grand. So if they were to make a special edition Skyline that was a hundred grand, would you buy it? No, I would buy the one for twenty grand and then do what I wanted to do with it and probably drop like another twenty grand into it. Oh my god, you would put twenty grand of upgrades into a car? Yeah, if I if I had the money and I was like, I want to do this thing. How yeah. much money would would you have to have in the bank for you to feel comfortable buying a twenty thousand dollar car? That's not that's cash. not even the question, like. Twenty thousand and one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> no, Guaranteed. It would, it would have to depend on like if I have a house and all this stuff, you know. It's it, too many you, factors. Can you legitimately get a skyline in America right now? Like an older, not the one that I want. Oh, what would you have to do? Like import it? Yeah, I think you can. You'll be able to get one here in like a year or so. Hmm. I forget the year that it's become an antique. What what makes something considered antique? I feel like it's literally like it's I think it's tw- I think it's thirty years since it was made or twenty five. Is that an actual definition? Yeah, like if you look up what makes a car in quote unquote antique, like you get the like the antique license plate and everything. Hmm. There's I, like I a, think it'd be cool to get like an original Ford Model T. How can we make that happen? Build one. You can probably find one somewhere. <laughs> I don't know yeah, why like you want in the that Ford though. Museum. I don't know. That's kind of cool. It's like the first like mass produced car. Yeah, but it's a Ford. <laughs> okay, Mister. My CEO is a thief. Ex CEO, thank you very much. Yeah. All okay, right. Here's next... the thing, though. Go ahead. Like he literally, not to like, I don't know. He literally made a plan to bring Nissan out of bankruptcy in like the early 2000s. So like. Maybe he didn't think he was being compensated enough, but Nissan owes him like a pretty decent amount. I don't even know if they'd be a company right now if it wasn't for him. Oh, yeah. That was also part of the thing that we read was that he was like a superstar CEO. Like yeah. he, he basically made Nissan what it is today. Exactly. But still, thief. Yeah. So don't be like Carlos. What's his name again? Gones. Gones. Don't be like Carlos Gones, kids. Next one I want to talk about vine bro don't even hate vine? on vine vine was the best thing that ever happened to this world oh my god is that the hill that you're gonna choose to die on that, no yeah 100 percent. vine was great no man vine was Dude, trash. i spent so much time on vine just scrolling through exactly there. the, vid- the that's videos my were point. hilarious no how that's... is vine different than youtube then all right we don't need to get exactly into that right now. <laughs> exactly <laughs> but i don't know what what is today's version of vine is tiktok right yeah. What do, what do you think of TikTok? I spent way too much time on it, and then I deleted it. Are you it. serious? <laughs> You're on TikTok? I was. I deleted it like a while ago. I probably deleted why, it like three or four months it? ago. Because I spent too much time on it. Exactly. That's what's wrong with Vine. It's I don't the, see how that, that's a problem. People it, literally get into like a rabbit hole with YouTube, but you don't. You don't. You're not sitting here trashing on YouTube. Yeah, because I'm trying to become YouTube famous. Exactly. People but, got Vine. You're just jealous you didn't get Vine and TikTok famous. You're right. But I don't know, like Vine, the whole six second video thing. How how are you supposed to even like put together a plot in six seconds? It's not. It's There's, just dumb stuff. You Obviously, have, people you did. No, people made millions even on Vine. You have no setup, no like climax, no conclusion. Bro, my favorite Vine video was I can't remember his name, but it's this black guy, and he literally like he was in a hotel hallway and he tripped, and then he was like on his knees. <laughs> and he pulled out like literally like spaghetti sauce and like spaghetti cooked spaghetti all together out of his pocket and he just starts crying and i'm like what's going on right now it was so dumb but i thought it that's was, like, my the point funniest thing ever. that's my point that's so dumb that's not that's so, comedy where's that's the, the american setup? dream to make millions off of dumb stuff also how did people make money on vine because i didn't even think vine had ads did it i don't know i'm sure they like through like Vine probably got them onto social media, and then they got big on Instagram and stuff like that. I'm sure there was something. 
they were, got sponsored and they made certain videos, including those sponsorships. Dude, they had social deals. social media is such a like weird game. Like things just keep popping up and going away so quickly. Like mm-hmm. uh, there wasn't there that other one like Periscope or something that they tried to make a thing. Um, it was supposed to be for like live videos and stuff, but then I think Instagram, not Instagram, Twitter maybe bought them and I don't know. There's too many different social medias now. I don't even have that. I don't even know what that is. I mean, it got bought by Twitter. So if you have Twitter, it's just like built into Twitter now. I don't have Twitter. You don't have Twitter? I do have Twitter, but I don't like go on Twitter at all. I just, I think just as a whole, I just hate social media. Yeah, I'm with you. Would would you consider YouTube as a social media? Because I think like a lot of people in 2020 consider it as a social media, but like no, there's it too like much, predates it. There's too much content out there that on there's too much content on YouTube that has nothing to do with social media. Like obviously there's vloggers and stuff like that out now, um, but there's too many how to videos, and a lot of people go to YouTube to figure stuff out to like learn yeah. and whatnot. I do that a lot. I don't think it, you can call it strictly social media. It's just like it's its own thing, man. There would be never, there would never be something that I think will ever surpass YouTube. Yeah, because I don't know. Just like you're saying, you can literally search anything in there, and they'll yeah. show you how to do it. Like I learned how to change the oil in my car on yeah. YouTube. Change like a bunch of i bought like in my old car that scion that i used to have yes yeah. people i used to drive one of those box cars till i wrecked it um but i was trying to i think replace the the default stereo with like an aftermarket one and i just looked it up on youtube yeah. and it's they like, showed me exactly how to do it it's like the video version of google because everyone's like oh i don't know how to do that i don't know what that is i'll just google it like it's the same thing except except just words and descriptions it's a video of someone doing it which i mean depends on how you'd like to learn things i guess but you should look up how to become a professional thief on youtube i need to it could probably give you some ideas i'm sure there's a video on it how many hours a week you think you work like at work yeah on like average. actual work or like no no, no that you're getting paid for um well regular 40 and then I don't know. I'd say at least like 55. Dang, 55. that seems like a lot. 50 yeah. to 55. It was like... Um, I guess that doesn't sound like that bad. No, but like working 50 hours Monday through Friday sounds so much better than working 50 hours Monday through Sunday. Why? Because then now you're doing just like 11 hour days. I said 50 hours in okay, five ten, days. Sorry, 10 hour days. I thought you said 55. No. Um, because like if you do 50 hours over seven days, then you work your straight 40 during the week and then you just have to come in on Saturday, Sunday for five hours a piece and you don't get to do anything when, whenever you get done with work. Uh, cause it, it feels uh, like the day is pretty much like it's noon, you're coming home and like, you're just like, man, I don't want to do anything. Cause like, you and you can't do anything. Working. Yeah. can't do anything Friday night. Can't do anything Saturday night. Cause you got to exactly. work the next day. Yeah. Yeah. I so. feel you. Yeah, that's a... All right, I got the the next one lined up here. Um, this is gonna be good. Hoverboards. Do you remember you hoverboards? Think those were bad. What do you mean? Yes. Do you remember hoverboards? Hoverboards are still kind of a thing. No, dude, I hate hoverboards. Worst invention. I'm gonna go Why? out and say it. Worst invention. Because... Did you ever have one? No. Then you I can't really say that. One. I... Exactly. Did you? you really want? I'm not the one calling it a shit invention. Here's why. Here's why I hate hoverboards. I'll give you my reasoning. Holy shit. University of Tennessee, um, Mincow Electrical Engineering Building, um, 2017. Josh Dobbs comes. For those of you that don't know Josh Dobbs, he used to be the quarterback at the University of Tennessee. Josh, I hope you're listening to this. You're He's the poster not. child. He was the poster child for four years at he UT was, because he was an engineering student while be, being like first string quarterback. Yeah, at UT. apparently had really good grades. I don't believe it, but whatever. I'm a, I'm a hater. Call me a hater. Josh, you're doing big things. Proud of you. Um, you should tweet also, this at him so we go viral. He also graduated and um, went to the Steelers, which is extremely impressive, then went to the Jacksonville Jaguars for a second, and now I think he's back at the Steelers as of last week. 
Dang. Um, so you really ba- keep up with him, huh? Yeah, very impressive stuff. You know, yeah. I got to keep up with him because as much as I hate him for the story that I'm about to tell, um, he, like, is an alumni at our university, plus, like, we went there when he went there. You know what I mean? So That's true. You got you to gotta support your homies. Yeah. But anyway, here's why I hate him, and I hate hoverboards, because – Half of the people on the football team had these, like, UT-branded hoverboards. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about when I say hoverboard, it's those, like, little miniature two-wheel segways that all the kids were riding around on for, like, a year or two there. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Um, They had, like, a lot of battery issues. Oh, you're going to make me edit a picture in now? God dang it. (laughs) Okay, anyway, okay. now that you, you see what a hoverboard is, they had, like, a lot of battery issues. I think some were, like, exploding and stuff. Um, but Josh Dobbs comes riding in on his hoverboard, and to me, as a little, you know, junior, sophomore, whatever I was at the time, I was like, oh, my God, it's Josh Dobbs. I was a little starstruck, right? So I was like, I'm going to open the door for him. Hold the door open, let him go past me. He rolls over my foot. With his hoverboard. <laughs> he rolls over my foot, man. And he didn't even say anything. He had his Beats by Dre headphones on. He didn't even look back. Look at me. No acknowledgement. No thank you. Nothing. Just rolls over my foot. Straight disrespect. Was it Was it your $750 pair that you showed earlier? No, it was not. But I was right, still yeah. really upset. Yeah. And it, like, it didn't really hurt at all other than just my ego. But, uh, yeah, that's why I hate hoverboards. Your turn. Well, <clears throat> Give me your pitch. <clears throat> First of all, you should uh, tweet at him or something. Be like, hey, we talked about you in our podcast. Get massive exposure. But you should also be like, you ran over my foot and ruined my shoes. And see if he, like, gives you a pair of shoes. Or something. You no, know? I don't, I don't want like, Josh Dobbs to give me give me shoes. I don't need shoes. I know, you got plenty of them. But that'd I need be a cool an apology. Story. Well, maybe he can give you that. Maybe he'll apologize to you on Twitter. That'd be kind of cool. What would be really cool is if he made like like a six-second video and was like, Jerome, I sincerely apologize. And then everyone's like, who the heck is the Jerome kid? And then and they then scour the YouTube internet. Famous. And then they don't know you are because you don't have enough subscribers and views on YouTube. Oh, God. That hurt. <laughs> you don't even know how many subs I have. How I don't many know, subs do you enough. think the channel's at now? I don't know. Less than 300? <sighs> Damn, he's right. Yeah. Less than 300 at the time of release of this video. Mm. Anyway, um, no, I think that they are cool, and I wish I would have at least gotten tried, gotten to try one out. So, so many was... people got hurt. You know what's cooler than a hoverboard around the city of Knoxville? You know how they got all those electric scooters? I that hate you can like things. Pay? Why? You hate those, but you like hoverboards? I don't hate those, I guess. I don't know. I just I've been on one like twice, and I was like, this is cool, I guess. You know, um, there was that time that Barb and I came and visited you in Knoxville, and we, like, the three of us were just like, you know, we were loopy, and we were riding around on that scooter. That was fun. Yeah, good times, good times. But the reason I I don't mind them is because, I don't know, I just think they're cool. And I saw this video of a kid, probably on Vine, mowing the yard while pushing himself on the hoverboard while mowing. That's smart. Okay. You changed my mind. That's genius. That's smart. Yeah. You should you should go back to like where you interned at John Deere, and tell them they need to make that like an actual product. You're kidding. They already do have something like that. I I know, but like not like a self propelled mower. Like actually a hoverboard. I don't know. You know you they need have to, mowers you need to where go you back. like stand on the back. Yeah, you need to like... go back to the drawing board on this one. They literally have that out. You need to go back to the drawing board on this one, I think. I want you to Google it and then include it right here. Oh, my God. <laughs> nope, that one's not happening. That one's not being included. Okay, okay. Speaking of exploding batteries, you remember the Samsung Galaxy Note 7? I feel like you keep bringing up things that, like, one, like, not a lot of batteries exploded. Yes, oh, one is that's too not many. True. One exploded on an airplane, man. I didn't know about that. That could have been, like a natural disaster i don't know what makes it it, i mean i don't think the airplane went down but it exploded the plane or the the phone exploded the The phone yeah the phone exploded okay you can't talk about exploding planes i feel like you targeting like samsung what galaxy 7 like that's not fair you should target 
this Galaxy phone that Samsung releases, whether it's one through ten or like you should, you should hate all of them, not just one for one well, I, reason. Well, I that's do like hate, saying like I do hate all of them because you know I'm an Apple sheep, but. This one in particular, it had an exploding battery. That's what it's known for. Didn't Apple happen? That happen to Apple? No. Like under a pillow or something, or was that no. also Samsung? I, um, I'm not sure. There was report of like one Apple iPhone, like just a single one device that exploded. The Note Seven was like, like hundreds, maybe thousands were exploding because they had like a faulty, um, I don't know, couple. Suppliers that's all I'm saying, of, man. of it batteries. Still counts. You should hate Apple if that's if that's your reason. You should hate Apple iPhones as well. Apple did have the the whole uh, what's it called like bend gate. You know what I'm talking about? Where their their iPhone. I don't remember which one it was. Maybe the iPhone Seven or something. Maybe Six Plus. It would like it would bend. Like you could put just a little bit of pressure on both sides, and yeah, exactly. And you could bend it. And I think this people, is a Seven. Some people, I think it was more of a problem on like the plus models. Well, um, I have small hands, so. But people were were like. Can you see a bend? No. No. You must. Think if I break my one. phone, you owe me a new one. No, stop, stop doing that. <laughs> but um, still works. There was there was a, uh, I can't remember exactly what was happening, but people would wear like you know like skinny jeans and stuff and have their phone in their pocket. And they would pull it out, and it would be bent because the jeans were too tight. I didn't hear about that. No, so I did hear about the thing that Apple software. It would like as a new phone came out, they would purposely make the older models like software wise, like That's slow true. down and stuff like that. And you know what's funny about so you, that? You don't hate I Apple was... for doing that, but you hate Samsung for blowing up. Well, like I said, I was an Apple sheep. Okay, yeah, yeah. I still am an Apple sheep. But what's funny about that one is everyone would tell me about that, and. I like adamantly denied it for so long, like even after like you know even after Apple came were, out, yeah, even I was after like, Apple no, was like, yeah, we did they that. would never do that. They would never do that, and then they admitted it, and I was like, oh, damn, they did it. They still won't do it. But yeah, I guess smartphones as a whole, kind of a, a crappy invention in the future. I mean, it's everyone is gonna hate you for saying that. Smartphones literally like run this world now. Who we'll runs the world? Not women smartphones even the women can probably agree dang i'm just uh, i'm gonna let you keep I'm going gonna get with a bunch that of hate one. on that one you are <laughs> you are yikes um but no like just smartphones as a whole as amazing as smartphones are they've like completely like just messed up society and like social interactions and stuff think about how many people in the world now you'll be like hey let's go get lunch or let's go get dinner and you like with like a group of people maybe not one on one but you just sit there and you know four or five people say and everyone's just on their phone just looking around we always do the thing where Twitter. we just put our phones in the middle really you actually or like do that? We, we put our phones on like the table or something like that so if we need to answer we will but we're not like on instagram while we're at dinner with people and stuff that's actually that's smart i yeah. like that also we just have self control I do too, but I'm saying like other people, yeah. like smartphones just seemed like it's like too addictive, you know, like going back to kind of what we were talking about, social media and stuff like that little dopamine hit that you get of when someone likes your photo or likes your tweet or whatever. It's like, it's addictive, right? I think they've done studies on that to prove that it sets off your dopamine receptors and people just love it. So you just get addicted to your phone. Yeah. And it's so like, true. I don't know. It's, it's bad. Obviously, at the same time, smartphones have made like in insane amazements in what life. advancements in life. In life. Yeah, yeah. In I don't know. It's like stuff. it's like anything. If you use it too much or if you let it control your life, obviously, it's a bad thing. Yeah, like cocaine. Too much cocaine is bad. No, I'm just. Oh my God! Some of the things you have said in the last five minutes. Good God, man. Anyway. Speaking of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a question. Did did Coca-Cola used to have cocaine in it? I think so. I was having this conversation with some friends the other day. And I, I literally had 
no idea. I thought that was just like a thing that people said. I'm pretty sure it did. Obviously, no way. Like... Did cocaine used to be legal? Yeah, probably. I'm sure at one point in time. Legend holds that the original Coca-Cola formula contained a significant amount of cocaine. Dude, that's how they got people. I took uh, one of those... Uh... Coca-Cola was named back in 1885 uh, oh. for its two medicinal ingredients, extract of cocoa, coca leaves and cola nuts. Oh, Coca-Cola, that's kind of cool. Interesting. Interesting. But anyway, yeah. Sure enough. Weird. I think I took one of those uh, DNA test things where they like, you know, check to see a bunch of different stuff about you. Um, what's like it, the Ancestry.com thing? That's the one that's coming to mind, but that's not the brand I did. What's the other brand called? I don't know. 23andMe. 23andMe. Mm. Um, not sponsored by 23andMe, by the way. You sounded but, so sad when you said that. <laughs> hey, if they want to sponsor us, that's cool. Hey, 23andMe, if you're listening, sponsor us. Um, but anyway, I did one of those and it told me that I am like addicted to caffeine, which I feel like that's not true. I feel like I don't drink a lot of caffeine. I feel like that's not true, but you're addicted to beer. What? That's not true. You drink a lot of beer. No, I don't. How much is too much? You know what I mean? That's when you know you have a problem when you're saying it like that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, going back to Coca-Cola for a second. Did you know? This is another fun fact. I'm just giving away all my NBA secrets right now. Did you know that back in the day, um, people apparently in a blind taste test between Coke and Pepsi, 90% of the time picked Pepsi because Pepsi tasted better. So then that was when, have you ever heard of New Coke? No. Okay, well, Coke came out with this product that they called, it was literally called New Coke. And it was a better tasting Coca Cola that they tested and whatever, and it tasted better than Pepsi. But then I when they put more cocaine in it, <laughs> maybe. But then when they actually like brought it to market and released it, um, people were so mad that they got rid of like the original Coke that they had to basically cancel new Coke and then bring back the older, crappier version of original Coke. And then people were happy again. Very counterintuitive, man. Makes no sense. No sense at all. Yeah, whatever. But, They're yeah. still around. Yeah. Okay, so before we get too far away from smartphones, I got another one for you. The Samsung Galaxy Fold. Have you seen this? Like, the new trend of, like, foldable smartphones? Yeah. What are your thoughts? Wait, so do you not like it because it's a complete disaster right now? Like, if they got it to work, and it worked without, like, breaking the phone, do you, would you be on board? Because hating something as, like, a prototype because it's cracking and whatnot, I feel like also is not justified. That's fair. I think I think it's two-parted. I think I hate it, one, because, yeah, the prototypes suck, and they're breaking. But I think, two, I just don't like the idea of, why are we going back? Like, why are we going backward? to foldable phones again oh yeah like i feel like i think it's i think it's not necessarily backwards i think like people like the whole bigger phone thing that's why like iphone keeps coming out with like plus and like small size and stuff like that but like people also like tablets they like being able to do stuff um that they can't necessarily do on their phone so they have like tablets mini computers like that's why you have that's why i feel like this is gonna be well this is gonna be something with like they can do on one device and pay two grand or whatever it is um and get this one thing it's basically like a mini computer for them like they for the, especially people like at work i know my boss well like my director not my direct boss um he carries around like an ipad at work so like he can literally just like check emails while he's on the floor like walking around and like he but has it's that. not it's not reducing the cost any like the fold costs like eighteen hundred dollars but still, so like you have your regular phone now you don't have to carry around two things i'm not saying like for me, I'm never going to get it. I don't see the use for it. But, like, it's going to be – some people are going to want it because it's new and it's fancy and stuff like that. And they're probably going to make a lot of money on it. But, like, do I hate it? No. Am I going to buy it? Also, no. Here's my thing, right? It's like way back in the day we had only landlines. They were, like, gigantic bricks, right? Then we went to, like, car phones or whatever. 
Then you had like the big cell phones that were, you know, super thick and whatnot. Then eventually you got down to like the Nokia size. And then then they started to flip. Like you had like the Razer. Yeah. Remember? I do think the foldable Razer like smartphone that, that that they came out with, I think that's cool, but only from like a nostalgia perspective. Yeah, yeah. Not from a functionality perspective. And so then it's like, okay, we got away from the flipping phones and now we're just trying to go back. I will say the one thing that's always cool. Um, have we, we've talked about Tristan before on this podcast, right? Probably. Um, so back in high school, I remember he used to have one of those flip phones, and he would always like if he was mad at someone or whatever, whenever you he hang out, he just shut it closed. That was the coolest thing. Yeah. I never had a a flip phone like that, but I had. A sliding one. I never had like a flip phone. Yeah. So that's my thing is like, why are we going back to flipping? I get your point about the whole like tablet cell phone thing. So you hate it because it folds. Yes. I literally hate it because it folds. A smartphone should not fold. That's dumb. You're dumb. Why? Because I feel like that's not a good enough reason. I guess like every end you can have your own reason for hating something. I just don't think. The Galaxy Fold's not even that big. It's like, I don't know, like seven inches. I don't even know how to orient my fingers here. It's like a seven inch screen, and so you close it, and now it's like tiny. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> You're over there just cracking up. Oh, man. Just like the phone did. <laughs> nice. It cracked no. up. I feel it like literally once broke. they get it figured out, it's going to How are you going to have a piece of plastic on the phone? Not tell people not to remove it, and then when they remove it, it breaks. I feel they'll learn because they just spent for a two thousand dollar phone. Well, maybe they can listen to what these people are saying who made the phone. <laughs> Yikes, man! It's like it's like telling someone like, "Hey, when you buy your car, uh, don't drive with the e brake on. You'll you'll burn like your tires and shit up." Like, wait, is that a thing? Yes. Am I not supposed to drive with the e-brake on? Shut up. Um, but that's like saying something like that, and then people do it, and then they come back to the dealership and be like, hey, yo, my car's messed up. Like, no, Sherlock, your car's messed up. Like, you're supposed to do, you you did something that you weren't supposed to do. Same thing with the phone. Don't take off the little plastic layer that tell you not to take off, and then you take it off and it breaks. That's on you. They literally told you not that's to like take the it whole, off. That's kind of similar to like the whole like Apple versus Fortnite thing going on. Cause like, you don't you don't you haven't heard about Apple versus. I saw Fortnite? something about it, but I don't care that much about either, so I didn't. Well, basically, it's like Fortnite doesn't want to pay Apple their thirty percent cut for being on the App Store or whatever, so they instead made an option on Fortnite where you can buy like a skin or whatever for nine ninety nine if you pay through Apple and Apple gets their thirty percent, or you can click a secondary option that kicks you out of the App Store, goes directly to the epic website and you only pay 7.99 but fortnite gets all of it yeah that's messed up and yeah but then, here, here's the thing fortnite then, was was big without apple right but then so apple kicked fortnite off of their platform right they kicked it off the app store and then fortnite came back with oh apple's trying to cancel us but i'm like you knew the terms of the app store and yeah, you, no, you like tried apple to bypass them. apple is 100 percent justified in what they did I agree. If, but that, if, they're, if they don't want to pay like the 30% to be associated on the app store, they obviously think that their platform is good enough on its own and they don't need Apple to make money, which I don't yes. think they do, honestly, because like they made, they obviously were very successful before they were in the app store. But then but that's like as an far entire... As, mobile, as far as mobile gaming right. goes, if you want to be in that... Market whatever, segment. Yeah. Then that's the way you got to do it. Like Unless you want to make your own store... That or make your own phones or whatever. Make your own phone. Like Apple's not gonna put your app that's a store on their phone just so you can make money. Like no, that goes back to the whole thing. You're gonna pay thirty percent to get that even on there. Android might do that, but I doubt it. I agree with that. I'm like, well, no, no. I think they did because it got kicked off the Google Store too. Yeah. So they, they did like, the same they're thing. just being stingy. They're like, if you like, if you want to be part of mobile gaming, that's what you have to do. I agree. I agree. It's like they're just allowing you to have access to this customer base that you wouldn't have access to otherwise. Exactly. Now that I think about it, it sounds like kind of a monopoly, but... 
maybe 30% is a little steep, but also, like, they have one of the largest market shares of smartphones in the world. Yeah. Don't make them foldable. That's all I ask. Oh, you think- I would love for Apple to come up with a foldable phone, and then you eat it up, and then you go watch this We video. come back to this? Yeah. And Do you, you think they would? That's, like, the best thing. You think it's, like, literally, the, like, sliced, like, bread or something, like, all over again? What? And I'm going to be, like, you, you two-faced, you... you I will give you so much crap. Apple Apple is notorious for doing this thing where they like will basically take someone else's product and just make it 10 times better and then it blows up. It essentially goes viral. And then it blows up like the battery? No. That's Samsung. <laughs> Samsung will do that. They'll take a product and they'll blow it up. Um Name name a product that Apple did that with. The iPad. Like tablets existed before then apple watch smart watches existed before then i feel like it's not necessarily that they made it better you're they right it's the added, brand it's, it's the, the brand. brand it's the name um it's like you can make a smart watch but the fact that your smart watch is able to communicate with your phone because the ipod apple, even apple can do mp3 that. players were a thing before that yeah but they weren't really like ipods you know What's what's the difference between an iPod? Oh, and I'm an MP3 sorry. I'm thinking player? about I'm thinking about like an iPod Touch when you say iPod. Oh, I'm I'm going old school iPod. So again, with iPods, it was a software thing. No, they made like iTunes, and it was like super easy to like, buy true. music and things like That's that. That's true. Did you used to buy music on iTunes? No. What? Did you I have remember. an iPod? iPod. Not an iPod Touch. But, but before I didn't really that, have you it know for what? music. No, I didn't have, and my sister had an iPod, but I don't know what yeah, she Yeah, mine did. too. I don't think I, I think I she bought CDs, either. and then she would download the CDs, because you could do that. Oh, that's right. I wonder, can, you think you could, can you still do that? What? Why do people even sell CDs anymore? Do people still buy CDs? I'm sure they buy the album in, like, like a downloadable from, like, Apple Music. I feel whatever, like even... But they don't buy the actual physical CD. I feel like even something like the iTunes store is kind of becoming obsolete now with like streaming. Cause I can't tell you, I, I actually did used to buy albums and stuff on the iTunes store. Like anytime Eminem put out a new album, I'd go on there, fourteen ninety nine, buy it. Yeah. You know, I'd get gift cards for birthdays and stuff, load that on there, buy it. I would do the same with apps and stuff. But nowadays it's like I don't do that. I just pay four ninety nine a month or whatever for my Apple Music subscription, and then whenever a new album comes out, I just download whatever I want. You know? Yeah. So it's like, I mean, did you're they, paying. Did they kind of kill their own service? No, because well, what percentage of that do you think actually went to Apple? You know, of that album sale, I bet majority of it went to. The, oh, the that's artists. a good point. It's probably that same thirty percent cut. I doubt. I bet. I did, I don't. I don't know if it'd be as high as thirty percent. Honestly, I don't know what that is. But now with with this Apple Music, I also think it's ten dollars for Apple Music. Oh, I've got the student edition. Oh, uh, you cheap code. Um, but I guess you're right. Because even if it's ten bucks a month, like say an album costs ten bucks, like now you're essentially buying an album every single month. Where I would never do that before. I'd buy an album maybe like once every six months. Yeah. But you're also able to buy more than one album. You're, That's true. you're buying like infinite albums That's for ten bucks a month. You could hypothetically buy it. Yeah, you could yeah. go and download all the albums in the world today. Yeah. Exactly. It's crazy, man. It's insane. In the um, I did have. We're at about forty-five minutes, but I did have one other thing that majorly failed that I want to talk about, and it's in the TV category. I think I saw this in your list that you sent. 3D TVs. Yeah, I absolutely hate that. I'm with you on that. Thank God. We finally we got agree one. on that one. We got one that we can agree on. I just, in general, I hate 3D movies because putting on those glasses always yes. gave me a headache. It what gave is me the, point? the worst headache. And then, like, don't get me wrong, the, the idea of it is cool, like popping out, scaring you, blah, 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 blah. But, worst headache. And then I don't want to put on, like, plus you've glasses got glasses while I'm, like, chilling at home, you know? And you have glasses. Like, you wear glasses normally. So it's like, how do you put those glasses on top of the glasses? Here's what I think is is kind of trying to happen um, with the trend that things are going in right now. Like, I think they're going to try to make, like, VR TVs 
or maybe not TV. Where you like, put on glasses and the glasses like have a connection to like Netflix and you watch yeah, Netflix I think on a TV through your VR instead I of just turning on a bloody TV. Yo, I think that's already a thing. Like I think I don't know what the software is. What is it? Like HTC Vive or Oculus or whatever. Oculus, yeah. Pick your favorite pick your favorite VR headset. I think you can download Netflix on your VR headset. And then you can click it, and it'll give you like a like a movie theater type experience. That'd give me a headache. I would hate that. I would hate that. Speaking of which, have you tried those like VR headsets? Um, I tried one, and it was like some like magic sorcery type game where you cast its spells and something like that. Yeah. But I literally put them on for like maybe ten minutes, and. I keep saying it gives me headaches, but like it literally gave me one of the worst headaches in ten minutes that I've ever gotten. Really? I wonder yeah, why. It just bugs with my eyes, man. Was it it must have like maybe the frame rate was low or something. Um, this was like the wild this was probably like two or three years ago. Cause supposedly you have to have like ridiculously high frame rates in both both eyes, like one twenty plus and um, I thought like the, the human eye was a sixty hertz with. refresh rate. Uh, I don't know. Unconfirmed. I'm pretty sure the human eye is 60 Unconfirmed. Hertz. I all I know is it has to be really high because otherwise you get this sensation of like nausea. Well, that's well, I think it's 60 hertz because like everyone always says like what's the point of getting like a monitor that refreshes more than like 60 hertz because your eyes can't even see it. I don't know about all that. I agree with that though. <laughs> what is the point? Because don't like pro gamers and stuff get like. 144 and well yeah I, I think it's all a marketing ploy man the human eye can process 90 maybe that's my guess yeah let me continue reading this article <laughs> riveting for our listeners while niche sits here and <laughs> reads an article to figure out what the refresh rate of the human eye is still reading Okay. Leave me alone, bro. I'm slow at reading. What can I say? You keep reading. I'll I'll vamp for you. So yeah. on There's this week's episode, there's a lot of articles episode... that I don't feel like doing it. The human eye can process up to 10 to 12 images per second and perceive the pictures being shown individually. When this rate goes up, perceive as motion. Human brain perceives reality at a rate somewhere between 24 to 48 fps. So you can't huh. even you can't even process something 60 f- fps. I play video games at like 200 FPS. Why? It doesn't do me any good, apparently. Wait, that doesn't I make think, sense because I think if I got I think we're 60, talking about different things. I think yeah, we're I talking think about and yeah, the refresh rate and frames per second is different. Humans can see around a, a thousand hertz. If you play video games at 60 hertz versus 104, you will definitely know and feel the difference. Okay. Oh, okay. So that must be wh- where people get confused then when they say like. Oh, why are you getting something that's 144 hertz when you can't process it? They're probably thinking of frames per second, which is different. Yeah. yeah. But so yeah, going back to the VR thing, I I think it's like you have to have a super high refresh rate in each eye specifically, and a really really high resolution, or else you get this like sensation of nausea. Like I said, yeah. I've never tried anything in VR. I'd really like to, because it seems cool. But yeah, plus like. I know my dad tries to, they're trying to like implement some VR or AR type stuff like in the workplace. Like Pew Pew AR? No. They're trying to bring Pew ARs Pew. into the gun, into the into the workplace? No. That's no. dangerous. Augmented reality. They're trying to do some pretty cool stuff like do you figure like, out how to. Do you like to... augmented reality 15? <sighs> but I. All right, and with that, I guess we will have to end this week's episode because that was just such a bad joke. Oh, my so, gosh. Niche, right. sign us out. Sign us out, Niche. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, I just threw it to you just to see what you would say. All right, well, thanks for watching, folks, and uh, we'll see you next week. You didn't also, say any of the stuff that you're supposed to say. What? Like Go what? ahead. Like telling them to subscribe, like. Oh, please subscribe. Also, if you guys have uh, – any ideas for what you want me and Jay to talk about, please leave them in the comments below. Tell your friends, your family, your dogs. I'm sure they would love to see it. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. That's pretty good. I liked it. Bye. Catch you guys next week. <laughs>